Oh, hey, Ethan, how's the new cafe going, dude? Hey, oh man, it's going awesome. Thanks so much for asking. Uh, I actually just got a new rendering back from the architect if you want to check it out. Come on. Right this way. Oh, get the new render right there. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That looks amazing. Yeah. What's the M stand for? Mikey's Coffee Shop, because she's going to run it. Oh. And, uh, and I just watched our old stories archive from the cart days, mm -hmm. and it was a riot. We looked so tired, and we were all incredibly skinny, like to the point where we looked... Sickly? Sickly. Well, are you ready to get... Uh, Tired and skinny again? Yeah. Hey, it's Ross and Riley. Hey. It's roasting day, so there's some noise going on over there. We are gonna start doing a little bit of a, I'm gonna set this up, what am I doing? We are gonna start a little bit of a vlog series of sorts to talk about our cafe and its development. I'm really excited because uh, a lot of the video stuff we've done in the past has been uh, just so produced, like to the point where I don't know, it just takes a long time. So I'm excited to do some more organic vlogs. And if you are looking to start a cafe or something, we hope that this is helpful. We are a little bit into the process. So in this video, we'll probably try to backtrack and tell you some of the stuff we've done so far, like looking for the space and signing a lease, which is pretty much it. Hey, it's Ethan. Hey, Ethan, say hey to the people. What's up, vlog heads? You wanna see something cool? Check this out. Coffee. Wake up, people. Yeah, we compost it. Ooh, one thing we were talking about today, this is the area where we make all of our kegs. Um, and our keg kind program- Kind of right now. Our keg program is not huge right now. We basically just distribute to our cafe in Alpharetta and like one or two wholesale partners. But when we open this cafe in Dunwoody, our keg production is gonna like double. I'm interested to see how we do that. And if you follow along, like, like you'll see, cause I don't know how we're gonna do it right now. Hey. 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 Mayonnaise. Uh, just a little insider scoop. If you ever wonder why we usually have like three EKs on our bar, it's because they aren't ours. We just bench test other people's equipment, so. We just like try to flex that. Let me see those muscles. Yay. <laughs> We're in the car, about to go uh, record, what is this video? Cold brew um, concentrate? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna start serving cold brew concentrate. We already have. And so we're making a video about how you can make it three ways. It's gonna be great. One of the things that uh, has always stuck with us as far as how we think and do business is let's be core values led instead of policy led. As we're doing this cafe, we're kind of rethinking our values and rethinking how we communicate who we are to new employees or even how we uh, enforce policy, uh, just how we structure this whole thing from a personnel side. And uh, instead of like our employee handbook just being a whole list of policies, what to do and what not to do, uh, we are trying to make them more core values centric because whenever we're training people, there are a thousand situations that happen throughout their day that are, each situation is so different. We can't, we can't possibly expect to train them on how to do each one, on how to handle each one. But if everybody that works at Valor values what we value at their core and believes what we believe about our customers, about our business, about our city, then whenever they're approached with a situation that they may not know how to handle or maybe wasn't in the handbook and wasn't in the policy book, they will just act out of our core values. I mean, that does a couple things. One, that helps with diversity because everybody is gonna interpret our values differently. One person may take our, our, uh, our value, put empathy into action, and they may handle the same situation two different ways, and both of the, ways, both of the different ways are awesome. 
but they both exemplified put empathy into action. If somebody is trying to live out a value in handling a situation, but they handle it in a way that like we wouldn't want them to, we're not gonna like fire them because they were trying to live out our values. Um, and we'll, it's easy to have a conversation afterwards to seek first this way, buddy, this way. Seek first to understand and be like, hey, where are you coming from whenever you handle the situation this way? Try to understand them and then just do a little like values correction and alignment. Yeah, we out here. I gotta do my warm-ups, my juggling. It's one avocado, pure focus. <laughs> so we're gonna take you through a couple simple things and maybe a fun summer drink to show off how cold brew can be a little bit diverse in your beverage. At so, home. At home <laughs> with our Valor Coffee cold brew concentrate sold in source only. At home. At home. <laughs> All right, give me your best youth pastor, online pastor that What's up, guys? It's Ethan. You're on. No, this is the this is the camera over here. Your online youth pastor. Uh, everybody's been saying, you know, summer cocktails are everything, but I don't think booze is all that cool. So we're gonna be showing some coffee drinks, so you can kind of nerd out with your friends and drink cool coffee drinks at home during the summer. So how does cold brew lemonade sound? Okay. Are you serious? What are we doing, Ross? I threw the frisbee on the roof. Accidentally. All right, we gotta get it. I don't just love getting on the roof. That's that's not gonna be good enough. Four arms. You wanna come too, Ross? Absolutely not. This bow is full. You should hold him. <laughs> hold me, Ross! To go. Have you really never been to Dunwoody? I've never been to Dunwoody. That can't be true. Oh. My frisbee's back. My frisbee's back. Welcome to our conference room. Well, we're just neck deep in uh, our classic Thursday owners meeting where we just get to. So we've been talking about uh, video. We've been talking about how to keep our podcast nice and uh, spicy. Me and Ross had an awesome conversation about the, the cafe grinders. I don't want to incriminate any uh, grinder manufacturers out there. So let's just say I love Anthem. Anthem, uh, they're the best espresso grinders out there. You heard it here first. Hot take. Hot take. I. I'm always just trying to keep these fellows updated on what's going on with our second cafe. Uh, not the sexiest stage right now. Um, just a lot of emails with the architect and some potential general contractors um, talking about something called scope of work, what we're going to take on with the project and what we're going to pay people to take on with the project. So getting all those nitties and gritties taken care of. Um, but we should be having our full architectural plans uh, into our our grubby paws in the next like two weeks. So that'll be a huge step. And then we can start to get bids for uh, contract work and start submitting plans. Get get the city to say, build, build this coffee shop. So why don't we give everyone a little overview of what we have done with this cafe so far well we've always talked about growing slow and growing with our values in mind and uh, our culture being stable in mind so 
I think a huge part of that conversation was um, the leaders that we had at the time. Are they are they catching our culture and so integrated into who we are that if we went and did something else or we called them to carry out uh, our mission elsewhere, would it would it not be diluted, but rather uh, even more awesome? Um, yeah. And so I guess a year ago is a lot of those people were like almost two years into working with us and so we had we had people that were ready to ready to go to the next level um and then i mean then we started looking around right this this one was a little different than our first cafe because we kind of fell into it round one we did look around a little bit but with uh with dunwoody it was a lot of checking out different areas checking out different storefronts checking out uh yeah not not really different cities we're still trying to stay local um but the good people have done what he actually reached out to us oh yeah yeah i think that's a big takeaway we've had uh if you're watching this and you're thinking about building out your first coffee shop on our first cafe we had nobody reaching out to us um we had to really go out there and you know find everything ourselves so you know if you have big plans just know that in a way it's easier to find your second location yeah there are some things that make it still hard especially if you have high expectations but we certainly were faced with a lot more opportunities on this go round than on the last one yeah and we've always said we want to grow as big and as fast as we can while still maintaining our mission, vision, and values. And that is a big, that's a big as long as, right? Like, that, that's a big ask to grow a company and still maintain mission, vision, and values. Mm -hmm. I can see as we grow, like, there's going to be seasons where we compromise a little bit and we maybe aren't as details focused because we're so just you know, in the weeds of a new location, but mm. for the most part, we wanna, that those are the things, the mission, vision, and values make us who we are, so. But every, every single day, someone comes up to me and they say, how's the new location coming? Yep. And I say something like this. Oh, good so far, nothing crazy. Just uh, the landlord's doing their, their work, their, their scope of work right now. Uh, and they're in the permitting process and then once they're done hopefully we'll be able to get in and do our part get the bar made and get open soon so a lot of uh, a lot of the progress so far is up top and uh, but that's been fun for us because we get to chop it up and talk design ideas and, and dream a little bit even dream a little bit and it's okay to dream so taking it back here so far Found the spot, negotiated and signed a lease. Yep. That was probably what, like a few weeks of a process? Well, we were going back and forth between a couple spots for a little bit, and that kind of like mm -hmm. elongated it. But yeah, I'd say maybe a little over a month. I'd say after that, it's just been kind of where we're, we're still at, which is the planning, the drawing up of plans, picking an architect, picking a general contractor, doing some communication with the the landlord and the site manager about um, what kind of work they're going to be doing on the space and how that works for works for us. Well, you took the time to draw, draw up like the plans on the whiteboard and whatnot. Uh, do That's we want to give anyone a sneak peek of that? Is it still out there or has it been erased? I can go check. Sounds like Ethan's got the whiteboard, huh? All right, we erased the sexy side, but I figured we'd show you. Oh man! I figured we'd just show you what we got. Basically, we're trying to have a centered bar cafe, but with three floating islands. You have the front door here, another side entrance here. Front concierge bar, or we call point of sale. Two more floating islands here and here. This one with the kegerator storage cabinets, dishwasher. This is kind of like going to be the back bar, more or less. And then this is kind of like the production, the show. So this would have espresso machine, grinders, 
brewers, uh, <coughs> ice well, milk pitcher rinser, all that Gucci main kind of stuff. And then we'd have like a refrigerator here for grab and go stuff, pastries. The orders take place on this corner here so that there's a little bit more freedom for someone to kind of come around and be on the side where there's a less of a barrier between customer and customer to allow for a more um, human interaction. Yes. Really it's just seating, seating, bathroom, free poop. Um, this is where we clean, you know, this is where we chill. Office, yeah. back room. There's gonna be like a, there's gonna be two poop stations, uh, upgrade. How long have we wanted a center bar? Long time, many moons. When was the first time you saw a center bar and you were like, that's it? Check please. Honestly, for me, it was, uh, I think it was either Sidetrack or Revelator Chattanooga. Mm. I don't know, if you just have like a big open space and then you stick the bar in the corner, like totally. it, it's just, it, the vibe's off. It's a lack of integration between uh, guest and pick crew member, I suppose. We want to be well integrated. Yeah, not disintegrated. Yeah, not disintegrated. <laughs> <laughs> so there's just a, there's a lot of flow going on, you know? So I think that's a pro between even like a center bar where there's just one entrance and you're kind of like, locked into this hub. Yeah. But you can kind of, you know, you can do stuff like this, like all the time. How, how many times the seating? Almost three times the seating? Heck, three, four. I mean, our, our patio is gonna be mucho big too. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we should be able to have 30 or 40 seats in the patio space, which will be right out here. And then I think we, we said like what, 60 or 80 seats inside. So 80 seats, gosh. I know. We have to make coffee for all those people. Well. And other people. A couple teas, a couple matchas, heck, a few matchas if we're being honest with ourselves. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> our current cafe is only 1,000 square feet, 1,050 square feet. But the front area where guests actually are is 650. Isn't it under seven? Yeah. Yeah. It's so small. And we're doing a lot of dishes there. Yeah. I can't imagine the... The increase. The in uh, yes, the increase. You might just be the dishwasher here. Yeah. We're, we match. We're kind of matching. You could get yourself one of these. It's but new. But new. Our business started when we were 19 years old and we had no money and we ran a Kickstarter for $10,000 and built out our first coffee cart. And that is how we exist today. Mm. While we do have access to more funds now because we've been around for a little bit, we still want to allow people to be included in the process of our- Growth? Flourishing? Yeah. We are happy to say that to this point in our company, we have never taken any investment capital. We have borrowed money for sure, but you're looking at the owner's entirety, in, in, in entirety of this company right here. We just want to run a Kickstarter that for more than, I mean, yes, it is going to help us buy our espresso machine or something, Sure. but more so than that, it allows us to bring you into the fun and our rewards this time because we actually are a company already are way better that's so true. you've got subscription for a year coffee for a year but you, like as in you can walk into our cafe and not have to pay for a year you can walk into our cafe and not have to pay for life mm -hmm. uh, for the right price for the right price <laughs> for the right price you can get one of these founders t-shirts that has your name on the back that's yep. the one from our first cafe. Read it and weep. Yeah. Private coffee lesson. <laughs> Private coffee lesson. In our next vlog, we'll talk about design details, equipment. By the way, if you're ever starting a business, one thing you should definitely do, any type of business, get a credit card and put your purchases on it, especially up front when it's expensive, because you will get a lot of credit card points. And if you're ever starting a business, and you have the ability, 
grow a mustache because people will take you way more seriously. Because when we were 19, we were just young pups. And uh, the only way we were able to do it is that right there. That got us where we needed to be. Check it out. This could be you right here. Who's got the better stash? Who do, do you think you have a better mustache than me if you're just being honest with yourself? Well, we both have the same future opportunity. Growth opportunity? To grow more in the center. Is Ross is recording us? Ross. <laughs> <laughs> I was kidding about the mustache thing. It, yeah, no mustache. You needs. don't have to have a mustache. I think we should wrap there. I know you guys are going to miss us. But uh, we'll see you soon. Hey, we're going to Buffalo. Buffalo! Buffalo! We'll probably Buffalo. do some vlog content in Buffalo. Mikey's think? wedding. Buffalo. Let's just film the whole wedding. Can you make a face like that? All right, bye. <laughs>